the question. Senator Cantwell. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioner Reddick. I think you I uh, appreciate you being here today and all your hard work, particularly in such a busy season. I know you already know that you are receiving or have received a letter from myself and Senator Toomey about the tax season and wishing that the first quarter estimate tax payment um, deadline would be extended to uh, individuals. We don't get this difference between individual filers and estimated filers and the confusion that we think is being caused. And so do you have a comment about the letter or, I mean, you do have the ability to do this, correct? It would be a treasury call and uh, we have, I have not received the letter. I'm obviously familiar with the issue and we will not be extending the estimated payment beyond April 15th. Well, if it's a treasury call, then why are you saying that? Because, because we are working with treasury, obviously. The first call was made with treasury and this call was made with treasury and I'm a bureau of treasury supervised uh, by the secretary. Oh, I think I understand that. So we'll, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll take it up with the Treasury, with the, the Secretary of the Treasury then as well, and the White House, because look, this makes no sense. You have mom and pop businesses who have a hard time anyway complying with complex regulations, and now we make it seem like they don't have to file until May. But then all of a sudden, they start the process and realize, oh, they were supposed to make a payment anyway. And so this, I think, is confusing. I think it's unnecessarily confusing. Um, you also probably have some 1099 individuals that aren't, you know, if you talk about the gig worker, also really not that sophisticated as a tax filer. And they're also confused by this deadline. So a deadline that's May 17th but really requires people to do something beforehand is, I think, at least for this segment of the population, confusing. I just don't get it. I just don't get why we're creating this level of uncertainty in this environment, particularly when there's probably other complexity related to the COVID packages and what people might have done under the COVID packages. So then you create more work for yourself later in the process when people overpaid or underpaid, and then we have to, you know, figure that out later. I don't know. It just seems to me it adds to a lot of confusion, which we could be saying to everybody, the deadline is May 17th. That's the deadline. There are numerous other deadlines that were not extended. The only deadline extended was the filing of the Form 1040 and affected taxpayers associated with the 1040. We did not extend any other deadlines. Last year was different. This year is different. Well, I think, Mr. Chairman, I think this, personally, I think Senator Toomey and I have a well-founded point, particularly as it relates to small businesses and the confusion. I've certainly heard from lots of people in the state of Washington over this. I'm sure we'll hear more about it later. So I certainly will push my case to the continuation with the rest of Treasury and the administration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, one other question, actually, since I have a minute here. Um, I... Uh, want to understand the IRS recently put out proposed regulations on income averaging, uh, which uh, create a set-aside test that operates completely different than the other set-aside tests within the low-income housing tax credit. So I'm concerned about that. I understand there was a hearing on this in March and would like to know if the IRS is considering any changes to the income averaging regulations to bring them more in line with other L uh, LIHTC set-aside tests. I don't have the updated information in the hearing, but we will brief you or your staff um, and do that in short order. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, Senator Cantwell. Senator Brown is next on the web. 